Hi guys, so there is a small um, tutorial video that I've been meaning to make for a long time but I always postponed it because I couldn't find the time to do that. There is a there is a library made by Intel, it's called Intel Threading Building Blocks. It's a collection of algorithms for multi-core to improve um, some existing code that you have. The library is open source, completely free, can be downloaded on GitHub. It needs to be compiled, but it's quite easy. Now, what does it do? Uh, one thing that it does, it implements um, containers. They're similar to standard C++ library containers, but they are multi-core capable, thread safe. The thread safe operations are usually, it's pretty much always it's just insertion and access. It's not um, not the removal. So for example, uh, multiple threads can concurrently grow the container and append new elements, random access by index. Um, growing the container does not invalidate any iterators. Now, um, for removal though, it's not thread safe. The one that we will be looking at is the, the concurrent set. There's a few things you want to know. So it is analogous to standard library STD set. And it's a container that only, um, only has unique elements. So if you put two of the same elements in there, you'll only get one copy in the end. This may be useful for well it, for scientists I guess or for people who process data in this way. Maybe for uh, some statistical analysis as well. I'm just trying to see if I can find some, some good example of it. Uh, but the point of it is if you insert for example like one, one and two you will only get one and two. The another similar container is the unordered set. It actually works faster in all aspects. So it's faster insertions, faster access, and I think it's faster removal as, as well. Um, it's differently implemented. Um, it's based on a hashing algorithm. So it's based on a hash set. So for every element that you insert, you should be able to generate a hash key like this. Um, and the elements are not maintained in any particular order. For the concurrent set though, you don't need hashing but you need to be able to compare your elements and the elements are maintained in order and the internal storage structures, as far as I know, it's a binary tree. So two options to summarize, uh, an order set, it works faster, the elements are not in order and it needs hashing. Now, if you want to, after an expensive processing operation, you can always sort it later. Uh, if if you need to maintain the sorted data, uh, then concurrent set would be the best option. And it does not need the hash function, but it needs to be able to compare the elements. So which one is larger, which one is smaller, which ones are identical. Okay, so what are we going to do with that? Um, I will also compare them to the, the standard library implementation, which will be uh, this and um, we'll compare them using a very small uh, benchmarking code uh, which is linked in the description of the video. So the best explanation of what it does is just to go ahead and run the code like that. Uh, first output it creates it just to make sure that all threads are properly uh, 
used. So each thread uh, outputs its number. Uh, they're just gonna come in random sequence. And on my machine there is eight threads. So there's gonna be numbers from zero to seven. If something was compiled incorrectly, maybe some uh, compiler switch not used, uh, there would be only um, zero for just one thread. But here we use, we see that all of them are in use. And then the table is the following. So the algorithm inserts uh, 10 million elements, but not all of them distinct. So only the distinct ones end up in the set. And at first we have out of those 10 million, we have 1000 distinct ones, and then progressively 10,000, 100,000 and a million of distinct elements within this mix. So the algorithm, it first prepares uh, 10 million uh, different values, puts, places them in the array, and then the same array is reused to insert into the standard set. This will be a single core. Uh, it will be inserted into the threading building blocks, the concurrent set, but using one core. And then finally, it will use all uh, all the cores. I'm just gonna run this to scroll this up a little bit for some convenience. Um, all right, so let's see the results. So if out of 10 million elements, if we only have 1000 distinct ones, so one thing that we should expect is gonna be a lot of collisions when inserting. And uh, 635 milliseconds on my machine for the standard. Now, if you use the Intel's algorithm with just single core, it's no good. It's quite um, a loss of computing power. And even using all cores, all eight threads, does not improve things. So in the end, you get 1.65 um, result worse. Now for, for 10,000 distinct elements, we're already seeing a slight improvement when, when using uh, Intel threading building blocks. Um, although if it's run uh, several times, uh, this number will be around one. So it's maybe not perfect. But then again, you'll see that it kind of varies from one machine to another. But then this algorithm, it really starts to shine, really starts to produce good results when you don't have as many collisions between elements. So you're inserting 10 million, but only um, but a hundred thousand of them are different. So you're inserting more different elements and it takes four seconds for the standard uh, C++ library, but only 1.6 seconds for the Intel's threading building blocks, uh, which is already good. So this is kind of your threshold where you would start to see the improvement. Uh, and then if out of 10 million, a million are distinct, then it's even better. So you get 11 seconds versus three. Uh, this improvement, it's somewhere between uh, three and four times improvement. So in such use cases, um, if you want to save, you know, computational time and just use all multi-cores, that's a good way to go. Uh, let's take a look at the algorithm real quick and then I'll show another test using a 16 uh, thread machine. Let's see. So as I mentioned earlier, so this part, it just basically just runs a quick test and outputs the thread numbers just to make sure that you are really using the OpenMP library. Uh, just a reminder, you'll need to compile your code with um, fopenmp compiler switch if it's on Linux. Um, for the containers, so I have three of them. One is the standard container, single core. Uh, the, the, the other one is the concurrent set, but it will only be used for single core. And then the second one will be used for the multi-core. Those are our test options. So we have 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and a million distinct elements. And a total of 10 million will be inserted. Uh, now this random sequence will be prepared 
and the same sequence will be inserted into this three so that we have consistent testing. The uh, random values are just randomly uh, distributed and um, the type that we're using right now for them is unsigned int four bytes. But uh, if you want to run this code and experiment, feel free to put any other type. Uh, you can put a short or long integer types. Uh, doesn't make much sense to put any floating point types because then you'll have all the elements distinct. But for integers, can be some experimentation. So when the uh, array is generated, the uh, um, random value is taken, but then is taken by modulus and keys, which is one of this. So it, instead of taking all distinct elements, we just make sure that there is only, uh, there's a limit on the number of distinct elements that there exist. And then uh, there's three tests. So one is the single core standard library, single core Intel TBB. And then the last one is the one that we're most interested in, is the multi-core. Multi now let's see how this works on uh, AMD Ryzen 2700. So this processor has 16 threads. And right away, even in the, the worst case that we had previously, it already gives a significant improvement by about twice. So when you have um, 16 threads, this really makes a difference. And right away, this beats the performance of the standard uh, library set. And then of course, as the number of distinct elements increases, then you get better, better results. Uh, one interesting observation that I had, there is a, there is a rather big jump here between um, 100,000 and a million. And um, it might have something to do with the amount of cache available to a processor. Um, because for, for my laptop processor is eight megabytes of cache and then Ryzen has 16. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure about this assumption. And um, there is a immense, immense benefit for the, the multi-core machines with this algorithm. So for example, you can see here, it performs almost it's like seven times better uh, than the single core. Yeah, it's not, it's not a 16 time benefit, but it's still a very good um, speed up. Uh, of course, um, the on on the machines with lower number of cores, it's not as as prominent, but still. So this is something that, uh, as a programmer, you might consider doing if you ever using uh, those containers. Think about using them in uh, multi-threaded um, versions, especially if um, it actually takes some uh, significant amount of processing time. Uh, if you have like large amounts of data, like uh, in terms of like millions of records. And then of course, uh, all these concurrent containers um, do perform uh, better with multi-core, so feel free to test them on your own if you like. And thanks for watching. Uh, this is uh, something with a, that was on, on my mind for a long time, and uh, I'm glad that I finally was able to show it. 
The code will be in the description below the video, so feel free just to download it and run it. Thanks.